Hey guys, welcome to the video. And here today I'm going to show you how to transition from Cosmos over to Deep Sea. I was using Cosmos pretty much since day one and was always happy with it, not just on my systems, but on the systems that I did for uh, my customers and family and friends and things like that, but was kind of bummed when I saw that it went away. I made a video recently where I compared the top three Cosmos clones and Deep Sea hands down was the winner. It's absolutely great. You don't sacrifice anything in performance, functionality, features, or anything like that. It really feels like Cosmos, just slightly more updated and with a couple more things here and there. As we go along, I will go ahead and give you some tips and hints and suggestions to hopefully enhance your experience with um, deep sea and to make your transition even smoother still don't forget to hit that like button guys because it goes a long way to keep me motivated to keep bringing you content like this on the channel and in that recent video where i compared those three cosmos clones i told you guys if you wanted to see this tutorial to hit that like button and you guys did an absolutely outstanding job with that so here we are so let's go ahead and let us begin by getting some important stuff out of the way first okay so one of the things that i recommend first is to try to use an SD card that you formatted to FAT32. Now I know about the size restriction of the files and stuff like that. We'll get to that in a minute. Many people have used XFAT without any issues whatsoever. But then again, there's been a ton of people who have had issues with corruption. Either the games are corrupted or they just never install right. Maybe a certain game or a few games just don't work. And then when they convert over to FAT32, everything works. They can also experience corruption with homebrews and things like that. And people have experienced that. I have used FAT32 uh, SD cards all along, including on all the switches that I've done. Never run into any issues, including here with Deep Sea, nor with Cosmos as well. But that's completely up to you. There are ways to install larger files. You can break them up and then they can be put back together and compiled directly in the switch. You can install them directly from your PC to the switch without having to first put them on your SD card. I mean, there's different things that you can do. It's just a suggestion that may help you prevent running into issues now or in the future. All right, and the last thing we're gonna cover here very quickly is that there's a possibility after you do all of this that your games, your backed up games may not work. Now some might, some may not, or possibly all of them may not work. This is not Deep Sea's fault. This is just what happens sometimes when you switch from one of these all-inclusive package deals to another one. This also tends to happen whenever changes happen regarding the SIG patches. Even within Cosmos, you may have experienced this before in the past when there was a big update done to Cosmos or something happened regarding the method of the SIG patches, you got those errors and some games or all of them would not work. So you may experience that here if you do Tune in till the end of the video because I will walk you through a couple of things that you can do, including one surefire method to get them working again. Now let's go ahead and let's begin. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is come here to the Deep Sea GitHub, grab the latest version. The minimal version only comes with the homebrew launcher and the homebrew menu. And I don't think it has any homebrews in it. Basically, you just build up your own Cosmos or your own Deep Sea, however you like. But for today's tutorial, we're gonna grab one of these here, which come with everything. Now, the only difference between these two is that the patched version has all of the homebrews and everything, but also has the SIG patches. If you want to make your life 110% easier, this is the one I recommend you use, but ultimately is up to you. So go ahead and grab the file you want. And what I did here was I made a folder here on my desktop. You can call it whatever you want and then extract the contents of the zip file you just loaded into this folder and it should look something like this. All right, so we can go ahead and we can close this deep C folder for right now. We'll come back to it in a little bit. Now the SD card that's in your switch, you can hook it up to your PC. It should look similar to mine here. This is the one that has Cosmos and all the goodies on it. We can start deleting a few things. Let's go ahead and begin with the bootloader folder. We can delete that. We can also delete the sept folder. 
the hbmenu.nro file, this payload bin. Now this payload bin is actually Hecate. I need to rename it payload bin because of the dongle that I use requires it to be renamed. I'm gonna delete it because DeepSea comes with an updated version of Hecate. So we can delete those for now. Any custom folder that you created, like here I have games files where I uh, keep my NSPs and my XEIs and things like that until I install them. I'm gonna keep that. Uh, this ROMs folder that I made, I'll keep that. So any custom folders that you made, you can keep those. Let's go ahead and delete these. All right, let's just give that a minute. So what we're left with here is for sure the atmosphere folder, the config, definitely have your Switch folder here. You don't need to mess with that. And your Nintendo folder must be here as well. Oh, and by the way, I forgot real quick. If you have some other bin files here, like blockpickrcm.bin or the tegraexplorer.bin, those are payloads. You can leave them on the root of your SD card if you want. We will move them into the payloads folder where they belong in a little bit. All right, so now that we're here, we're gonna go into the atmosphere folder, and there's a few things we are going to delete here. We're gonna delete the config folder, config templates. We are going to delete fatal errors, HBL, HTML, and we're going to delete all these other files. Now, if you have some extra files on here besides these, then you can just leave them. It's possible they belong to another homebrew and they may need to be there in order for that homebrew to work. If they are not part of the deep sea setup, they'll just be ignored anyway, and they never really take up space. Those uh, files and folders are usually very small. So let's go ahead and delete these files. Okay, and what we're left with is this. You want to make absolutely sure you have your contents folder. Now you may or may not have these here. Don't worry about it because if you got the patched version of DeepSea, it will put those SIG patches back. Also, the files that we just deleted, the uh, updated version of DeepSea will put its own version of those files back in here as well. So it should look something like this. Let's go out and now we are ready to copy some stuff over. And just to be clear, by the way, these two folders are your SIG patches, the XFs patches and the KIP patches. So if you have them, just leave them there. If you got the version of Deep Sea that comes with the patches, don't worry about it. If anything needs to be replaced or overwritten, it will get done. So if you have them, leave them right there. Okay, now let's go back to the root of your SD card and let's go ahead, open up that deep C folder where you have all the contents that you extracted from the zip. Now, here's a little hint. If you want Atmosphere to boot up a little bit quicker, go here into the bootloader folder and open up the Hecate IPL.ini file with any notepad program. I use notepad plus plus. You're gonna go here to where it says boot weight and you're gonna change that three into a one. That's what it is in Hecate. That means that it will wait only one second instead of three and it will boot into atmosphere a little bit quicker. Whether you change this or not, it's up to you. It will not affect the performance of atmosphere either way. The only thing that happens is it just boots into atmosphere a little bit quicker. So that's what I've already done. So once you change it to a one, save it. Okay, then close out. Now we can go ahead and go back here to the root of the folder and we are going to copy and paste everything to the root of our SD card. So I'll let it go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and finished. And by the way, if it ever asked you to replace or overwrite any files, make sure you say yes. Okay, so we can go ahead and close out of the deep sea folder. We don't need it anymore. Now you can go ahead and plug in your SD card back into your switch and boot into Hecate like normal and then boot into Atmosphere. Now I can't show you booting into Hecate because my capture device, my Elgato, does not capture Hecate and only captures from the home menu. 
and you know games and things like that but it will not capture a hecate so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to rename my hecate um whoops i'm going to rename my hecate uh payload bin and at this point, if you have any other bin files here, like lockpickrcm.bin or tegraexplorer.bin, like the ones I mentioned before, if you left them, you can grab them and just move them into this bootloader folder and into payloads. You can see there's already some there and put them there. That way they're not taking up anything on the root of your SD card. It's just a suggestion. It's up to you. Now my Hecate does have to be there, so I'll leave it there. I'm going to go ahead, boot into my switch, and then we'll pick up from there. All right, guys, so here we are at the switch and there's a couple of things we want to test out and a couple of things that I will run you through that are a little bit unique to deep sea. Now, the first thing we want to make sure is to uh, ensure that we can get into the homebrew menu. So let's go ahead and go into album. Just press A and it should take you into the homebrew menu applet mode. So that's good. Let's back out and then we are going to go into homebrew menu full mode so highlight any game here hold r keep pressing a while you're holding r and let's ensure that um, we can get into the homebrew menu and there we go now let's go ahead and just launch any homebrew just to ensure that it's working all right and so that's working all right, so we know we are good to go there. Now, a couple of things here unique to Deep Sea, but they're similar to Cosmos, is that you have the Deep Sea toolbox. So when we go in there, if you ever make any changes to your switch that require a reboot, just come here and click on Reboot to Hecate. It will allow you to go right back into Hecate without having to go into RCM mode or connect your jig or dongle. You don't have to do any of that. It'll just go straight into, um, into Hecate. And when you boot back into Atmosphere, your system will be fully uh, rebooted and any changes you made will take place. Another thing here is background services. If we go in here, for me, what I did was I turned off uh, the FTPD light. I keep the Tesla menu on. So I turned this off because this is actually FTP that works in the background. And some of you may like this. It allows you to FTP while you're anywhere in your switch. So that's pretty good and convenient. I think while the transfer is happening, the little LED light around the home button will flash. But I like to actually see what's going on on the screen of the switch. I couldn't install any FTP homebrews until I turned this off. So I came here, I turned it off, I went to the uh, homebrew app store, and then I just downloaded an FTP homebrew. But that's just me. Some of you may like having this running in the background. It takes up very, very little memory, just one megabyte, that's it. So yeah, there's other stuff here you can explore in the future whenever you want to update Deep Sea. Just go to the Deep Sea updater here and it will update for you right from here, just like Cosmos did. You can also install the SIG patches updater in the future when SIG patches update, the homebrew will just look for them and then install them automatically so you don't have to go through all that trouble. Okay, let's go back to the home menu in case some of you are experiencing issues with your games. All right, so if you're having issues with games, for example, maybe your games have a little exclamation point above them and they have like a little message, or when you try to play them, you get some errors and you just can't launch the game, you get some corruption messages or whatever, first make absolutely sure that you have the latest SIG patches installed. And if you got the latest Deep Sea that came with the patches, then you'll be good to go. If you know you have the latest SIG patches installed, one thing you could try is to reinstall the game. Now, if you use a Wu installer to try to install a game you already have, sometimes it will ask you if you just want to install the NCA file or if you want to install the whole game. Just pick NCA file and see if that works. It only takes a matter of seconds to do that. You can also do it with tinfoil. You can pick a version of tinfoil that is below 8.0 and it will work here. And you can also install just the NCA file. 
If that doesn't work, then unfortunately, you may have to just delete the game and reinstall it, but there's a process and I'll show you that in a minute. Just again, I can't stress this enough that this is not the fault of Deep Sea. Even with Cosmos, this would happen. And in the future, it could happen anytime Nintendo pushes a new update and things change around a bit regarding the SIG patches, then yeah, this may happen. And when people updated to like a larger SD card, they would experience that issue too, even though they were using the same version of Cosmos. So what you can do is if all else fails, you can just delete the game here, you know, come to manage software and then pick, you know, delete software after the games that are giving you problems have been deleted, go into Gold Leaf, make sure you go into homebrew menu full mode. Okay. And let's go into uh, Gold Leaf. Right, and we'll go into Go Leaf. Then you need to go to uh, Manage Console Contents and then scroll down to Unused Tickets and go in there. And if there are any unused tickets that popped up, I don't have any, but if you have any, make sure you delete them. Again, only do this after you've deleted the games that are giving you problems. And then once you're done, just use AWU installer to reinstall the games and they will work again. So yeah, hopefully you don't have to do that, but if you do, it should be only a one-time thing and then you'll be good to go from there. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If this helped you in any way, make sure that you hit that like button it keeps me motivated to keep bringing you content like this on the channel much love going out to everyone out there be careful be safe but have fun and we will see you on the next one